morning, church. How's everybody doing? Amen. Amen. Do have a few people in here this morning. Uh, I think we'll entitle each other rebels today, but uh, uh, that'd be just okay, right? I know there's uh, quite a few of you out there. Uh, we are running about uh, 15 minutes behind of what we announced, but but that's okay. Uh, better late than never, right? Hey, let's all wave at each other. Uh, if you're in here, that's fine. And all y'all out there kind of wave at each other too. Uh, I kind of miss doing that. I was telling somebody a while ago that uh, I tell you what, I feel so distant right now. But, but it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I want to thank uh, those that are here. I guess I should kind of keep that down a little bit. But all the, all that are out there, I thank you too. Uh, as far as church announcements go, I do want to make the announcement that uh, we will be doing the same thing uh, next Sunday morning. There will be something broadcasted at 10 o'clock on Facebook uh, for next Sunday morning service. I'm going to meet Wednesday night with uh, some here uh, to make that. Uh, me and my family is going to be on uh, vacations, uh, but there will be a 10 o'clock service uh, posted next Sunday morning here. And as far as following that, uh, just uh, we'll just stay in tune with each other the best we can. And, uh, but I know uh, for a fact that uh, Jesus is going to uh, fix all this and get us all right back together uh, the way we was. I do hear something this morning that I really liked, uh, and I want to ask you all this question. Uh, are we going to concentrate today on the fact that our churches and parking lots are, are kind of empty today, or are we going to concentrate on the fact uh, that the tomb Jesus was in uh, for three days is empty. I think we should concentrate on that uh, more than we're concentrating on, on what's going on. Uh, but as far as other announcements, I, I don't guess I have any at this time. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, as far as all of our stuff going on within our church, our committees and all that, I'm, I feel so out of pocket through all of that that uh, uh, just uh, praying that God's going to get it all, all took care of. But one more time, if you're out there or in here, let's do our uh, normal thing that we do and wave at each other. Uh, most importantly, let's be waving at Jesus and thanking Him uh, that He did come out of that tomb. And uh, like I said last week, and uh, I'll say again today, uh, very much out of my comfort zone zone as far as knowing that I'm going to be out there live. That's, that's kind of tough on me, just an old country boy, but I'm going to do whatever the Lord allow me to do uh, to stand up for Him. You know, I'm standing today for Mount Arat doing the best I can, but more importantly and most importantly, I'm standing up for a risen Savior named Jesus Christ. And I know that that tomb was empty. He's not in there, and it's an honor to know that today. But what the Lord has laid upon my, ha my heart today, I, I do have a few notes here of some Sometimes I'll make a few, but it seems like sometimes I use them. Sometimes I don't never get to them. But I ended up with three titles today, and I, I had trouble picking out the one that the Lord wanted me to use. But what I'm going to end up using today is living in the resurrection. Because, you know, that's what we need to concentrate on today. Uh, we know that uh, Jesus was in that tomb for three days, but uh, today when they showed up at that tomb, that tomb was empty. So we don't want to be living in uh, the crucifixion anymore. Uh, we don't want to be living in what Jesus went through. We want to be living in the celebration of the empty tomb, which is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to go to Luke 24 in our Bibles this morning. We're going to read verses 1 through 7 in Luke 24, 1 through 7. Even if you're in your home today or wherever you might be, if you feel led to stand for the reading of God's Word, you can do that at this time. The Bible says in chapter 24, St. Luke, verse 1, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humble our hearts again before you and thank you, God. 
for the opportunity, Lord, to be living this day in time, God. A day, Father, so many years after uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God, that we can stand and rejoice today, God, knowing, Father, that there is life after death through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on the cross at Calvary. God, we lift up this service to you today, Father. All that are here and all that are out there watching, God, that their spirits may be lifted and may we be uh, living in the resurrection today. Father, thank you and have your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated wherever you may be. Now notice here when they showed up at the tomb, the two told them, uh, why are you looking uh, for someone that is living among the dead? Among the dead, the Bible says. You know, as saved children of God, we need to realize today that there was a time in our lives when we went through a type of crucifixion in our lives. Now, we can entitle that in many ways, but I remember when I was going through that in my life, uh, it was a type of conviction among my heart when things were uh, starting to weigh down on me and I was starting to actually feel uh, the sins in my life. The Holy Spirit of conviction was setting down on my heart and letting me know that I was not right with God and, and that I'd been doing things wrong. I, I kind of like to say this was a part of my life when I was kind of in the tomb, in the tomb, so to speak. But then all of a sudden, when Jesus reached down and delivered me and uh, opened that old stone that was rolled in the way of that tomb of my life, I want you to know something else happened. I become alive in Christ. I become alive in Christ. It was the day of resurrection for me. It was the day of resurrection for me. But notice here they showed up and the angel's ass says, why are y'all looking for the living among the dead? Why are y'all looking for the living among the dead? Well, you know, we can go all day long on the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us and how he came out of that tomb and, and praise God, hallelujah, that he did because that lets us know that someday we're going to come out of that old tomb. Amen. I'm excited to know that I am going to live for eternity. Yes, I'm going to leave this walk of life, but then I'm going to be living in eternity. You know, we go on and on about that today. But what the Lord has laid upon my heart today is even though Jesus Christ come out of that tomb and he was resurrected and he's living, I want to ask you all today, he may be alive, but is he alive in our lives? Is he alive in our lives? Think about that for a moment. Is Jesus Christ alive in our lives? Oh yes, as God's children, we've had asked him to come into our heart and be the Lord and Savior of our life. Yes, we did that. But so often in our lives, as we're out there in a dark and dying world, do we show that we're worshiping a living Savior? Do we show that we are living a resurrected God? I heard it said one time before that uh, this person was saying, I visited y'all's church and I walked in there and I sat down and, and it was, was as if y'all was worshiping a Jesus that is still in the tomb, a dead God, so to speak. And I got to thinking about that and I thought, you know, uh, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. That, that's pretty true right there. Pretty true. Y'all want y'all to know that we're worshiping a living Savior today, a living God. And when people come and visit our church when they come in, they want to say, well, hey, these people got something going on. There's something alive in that church today, and it's called the Spirit of God. They're worshiping a living Savior. And that's the way we need to be. That's the way when God gets all this put back together, that's the way we need to be. That's the way we was, and we're going to continue on into that right there. Something's going on up in here. But I want to ask you today, is something going on in your life? In your personal life today, is something going on? Now, if you'll turn over to Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 20. If you turn over there, please, with me this morning. Now, what has happened in our lives today? What has happened in our lives? When Jesus come into my heart, I, I gained something. I gained what they call the Holy Ghost of God. You know, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But when I, well, when I uh, was born again, something come into my heart. So now I possess something. 
Y'all ever heard that word? Uh, well, that man's possessed. <laughs> you know, well, uh, guess what? Uh, uh, God's people, you are possessed too. You are possessed with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God today. But over in Galatians here, chapter 2, verse 20, the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now listen to that. I am crucified with Christ. I went through the crucifixion of the Holy Spirit of conviction set upon me. You know, it was horrible. I remember the, the guilt that I had in my heart. I remember that. But then when Jesus uh, let me know that I was forgiven and I felt that forgiveness in my life, I want y'all to know that was the moment that it was like the stone was rolled away and I was able to come back into my life as a brand new creature. Not turning over a new leaf, not to change a few things, but to become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus crucified with Christ. But we don't want to live in the crucifixion. We want to live in the resurrection of a living God. And we want others to see us. See us living in that resurrection. What do we possess though? What do we possess? Now if you'll turn just a few pages over there to Galatians chapter 5. I want to go down to verse 22. You know we can entitle a Jesus Christ many things. We can entitle him the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, uh, the Alpha and Omega, you know, the bright and the morning star, the, the lily among the valley. Many titles we can title Jesus Christ. I want you to know we can title him also my best friend. Amen. Because he is my best friend. And I'm honored to say that today in front of y'all and the whole world, if you're listening, Jesus Christ is my best friend. I love him today for what he's done for me in my life. And I most definitely love him because he has defeated sin and death for me. I know someday I'm going to be living for eternity. I want to live in the resurrection. But what do I possess now in my heart? What is another way we can entitle Jesus Christ? If you go down there in verse number 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, greatness, and faith. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And I thank the Lord for the reading of that word. Now, can't we entitle Jesus Christ love? Can't we entitle Jesus Christ faith? Can't we title Jesus Christ a meekness and temperance? Can't we title him like that? So I ask you today, are these things alive in your life? Contentment, hope, and faith, and love. Are they alive in your life? You know, the moment Jesus Christ come into our heart and we come out of that old tomb and started living the resurrected life of Jesus, you know y'all become the devil's enemy? The devil's enemy is what we become. And the moment he, we done that, the old devil tries to throw us back in that tomb and roll this big old stone right over us because he does not want the world to see what has happened to us. He don't want the world to see that we're worshiping a living God. He don't want the world to see that we're a loving person. He don't want the world to see that we're a forgiving person. He don't want the world to see that we have faith in our lives. He don't want the world to see that we got hope. He don't want the world to see that. So he's rolled this big old stone back over us. But I want to remind you today, Jesus Christ still rolls stones away. He rolled that big stone away that was had him in that tomb for three days over 2,000 years ago. And here in the year 2020, no matter what stone the devil has rolled in your life, Jesus Christ can roll it away. Jesus Christ can roll it away. He's still a forgiving God. I want y'all to know that whatever the devil's done in your life, it's not over the name of Jesus Christ. He loves you today. And that name of Jesus is above every name. It's above depression and worry and stress and heartbreak. All these things that the devil has planted in your life. Jesus Christ is over all of it. He is over all of it. As God's people, as, as saved children of God, washed in the blood of the Lamb that hung on the old cross, is still alive and still a well. But is he alive and well in you? So I ask you today, do you possess these things? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, greatness, and faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. Are these things alive in your life? 
Or has the devil put a stone in front of you? Now, we can entitle these stones in many ways. We can entitle them anger, worry, anxiety, hatred, depression, heartbreak, pride, greed, addiction, sadness, and frustration. Now, what's living in your life? What's living in your life? The fruit of the Spirit of God or all these things that the devil has put right back in front of you? All these things, worry, and stress, frustration, and anger, and hatred, all these things in your life. We have one of the two that we're showing a lost and dying world. We're either showing the lost and dying world a resurrected Jesus Christ or we're showing a lost and dying world what the devil has pushed back in the front of the children of God. See, the Bible says we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. But I tell you what, the devil ain't happy about that, is he? So the moment that happened in our lives, he tried to come back in and put that old flame out. Put that old flame out. Push you back in that tomb. Put a big old stone in front of you. Title it whatever he wanted to title it. Hatred or anger or, or prideful or selfishness. All these things he put right in front of us. No, I don't want the world to see you loving people. I don't want the world to see you forgiving people. I don't want the world to see you a happy person. I want the world to see you somebody that's accepted Jesus and walking around in this world mad as an old hornet. That's what the devil's desire is. Now I ask you today, who's winning in your life? Who is winning this war in your life? Church, Christians, we are going to live this walk of life until we take our last breath. And Paul says, absent of the body, we'll be present with the Lord. Now, I'm not going to be present with the Lord in no tomb. I'm going to be present with the Lord in heaven. <laughs> you know? And I'm going to be rejoicing. Paul says, rejoice again. I say rejoice. But what has the devil today put back in front of you? keeping you from worshiping and showing the world a resurrected God that we love so much. Amen. Wow. Blesses my heart to know that the devil gets me too. Here I am, a preacher of God's Word, uh, up in here in this fancy church, you know. But even me in my life, sometimes I am going out there in the world representing anger, frustration, hatred, Yes, God knows our hearts. We can go out there all day long with a big old smile on our face. I love Jesus. But down deep in our hearts, we're so full of anger and hatred. Think about that. God knows you as much as he knows me. I can fake to you and you can fake to me. But we can't fake to a living God, a resurrected Jesus. But I ask you, He's alive and well, but is he alive and well in your life? If he is, you possess the fruit of the Spirit of God. Love and joy, excitement, happiness. You know, right when I first got called to preach, <laughs> you know, I started hearing so many things and people started telling me what I needed to do and how I needed to do it. You know, and I, I was like, well, okay. Well, the more I prayed and the more I got to talking to the Lord, I thought, well, you know, hey, I got my own personal relationship with Jesus here. I don't really have to listen to nobody but the Spirit of God because it's alive and well in my life. Alive and well in my life. I had somebody tell me one time, oh, you need to do this. God told me to tell you that you need to do this. I thought, well, wait a minute. Now, if God wants me to do something, my God's going to tell me to do it. He's not going to have to go through you. Praise the Lord. Because I have a personal relationship with Him. Personal relationship with Him. And I worship a resurrected God. If God's people would go back in this world tomorrow with Jesus alive in their lives, this world would start changing. Amen. This world would start changing. If He would become number one in our lives again, this world would start changing. I tell you what. I think through all this stuff that's going on, it's going to come out and benefit the children of God before it's all said and done. I trust in that. The Bible tells us in Romans that all things work together for the good. It doesn't mean it's going to be good as we go through it, but it's going to turn out for the good. I believe that. But I want the church to be representing the living God, 
a resurrected God. You know, a, a church that's not a, afraid to say amen or hallelujah or, or to wave at each other, praise God. Be still, don't say nothing. I don't believe that way. God called me to shout it out to the world. Jesus is King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. And he come out of that tomb. He's a resurrected God. He defeated Satan. And he's already defeated him. But is Satan defeating you in your daily walk? With Jesus Christ. Has he crammed you back in that tomb of crucifixion. And denying you the joyful life. Of the resurrected God. That loves you so much. Is your family experiencing a resurrected Jesus in your life. Are your kids experiencing a resurrected Jesus in your life. Is the people you work for or work with. Experiencing a resurrected Jesus in your life. Well, it all depends on what side of the bed I get up on. I don't know about y'all. Some days I'm, 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 I'm a resurrected Jesus walking around in the world. And some days I'm not. And that love scared me there. But that's okay. Praise God. Jesus Christ is alive and well. But the question today is, is he alive and well in your life? Alive and well in your life. We've titled him King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Alpha, Omega, beginning the end. We've entitled him in many ways. The Bible it titles him in every book in the Bible, all 66. But we can also entitle him love. Entitle him joy. Entitle him excitement. Contentment. Somebody, somebody else wants to be. Are you living a life that someone else has a desire to live? Think about that for a moment. I don't know about y'all, but I get to thinking about my life, and I wish I was doing this, I wish I was doing that, I wish I was this person, I wish I'd done that, you know? But then when I think about the Bible and, and my relationship with the Lord, I think, hey, I just want to be me. <laughs> I just want to be me. Some people might like me, some people might not, but Jesus died for me. And he come out of the tomb on that third day. Amen. And he's alive and well. He has risen, y'all. He has risen. But are you living in the crucifixion? Or are you living in the resurrection? I want people to see me living in the resurrection of my Jesus Christ. Amen. Not crowded up in some kind of a addiction, hatred, uh, ill world. That's all of the devil. I want to live in the resurrection. I want to be excited to know that after this walk of life, I'm going to live on. I'm going to live on. So many of us people, including myself, sometimes we just put up a pup tent and we camp out here in this life. This is where I'm going to be. No, it's not. <laughs> this life's going to vanish away sooner than later. And you're going to go on. So why not while you're here, enjoy what Jesus done for you. He loves you so much. He is your best friend. He wants you out there to live and end the resurrection. Not stuck in the crucifixion. He bore that pain for you so that you don't have to bear that pain. He says, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Are we of good cheer? Are we of good cheer? Are we worshiping a living, resurrected Savior? You know, I've learned this past week that you can't be too long-winded when you're preaching on Facebook or online because all they got to do is flip like that and go to the next feller preaching or go to something else as soon as you say something they don't like or you've done lost their attention. So we got to be short-winded online. But if you're in here, it's kind of hard for you to get up and walk out on me, right? So I want you to turn over to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, if you would, in God's Word. 1 John chapter 5, I want to ask you something. Are you in here and out there, are you a saved child of God today? Do you have Jesus Christ living in your life? Now we've entitled Him many things, 
But we've also entitled in love and joy and peace and, and contentment and hope and faith, forgiveness. We've also entitled him like that. The Bible says over here in verse number 12, 1 John chapter 5, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I want to remind you today, if you're a saved child of God, you have life. You have life. And the only reason you're not living it is because the devil has put some stone in your way. And that was his desire the moment you received eternal life. So why don't we all, as an individual, come out of the tomb today with Jesus? Come out of the tomb with Jesus today and live the resurrected life. The resurrected life. What have you got to lose besides hatred, besides unhappiness, besides a broken heart, besides all these things that steal from us. The devil come to steal and destroy. Jesus come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Let's live in the resurrection church. We're not to live in the crucifixion no more. Jesus says, I forgive you. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. God help us all today to come out of that tomb and live in the resurrection. It won't be just good for you. It will be good for those you love, those that you're around. Be that person, and I've said it before, be that person that just irritates everybody. That dude's so happy, he just makes me mad. <laughs> Praise God. If I can make somebody mad because I'm excited about heaven, then be mad. Be mad, be mad at me. Praise the Lord. You know, I've heard it said, calm down, slow down. You calm down. You slow down. I'm going to live till I die and inherit heaven. Amen. And while I'm here, I'm going to let the world know I'm living in the resurrection and not worshiping a dead God. Amen. He's in my heart. He's alive and well. But Paul says, and I'll say too, it's a battle every day. Every day is a battle. Old devil tries to push me back in that tomb over and over and over again. And long as I'm walking this walk of life, he's going to continue to do that. But that's okay. But that's okay. Live in the resurrection, church. Only you know, only you know today what life you're living in. Are you living in hatred? Are you living in frustration? Are you living in worry and anxiety and stress? Has the devil got you locked back in the tomb? Jesus Christ still rolls stones away. And there's no stone he can't move. No stone he can't move. God's delivered so many people from addiction out there. And the moment that happens, the devil tries to get you right back on it. Right back on it. And when I say addiction, you automatically think alcohol, drugs, all this stuff. Well, I'm talking about hatred, selfishness, hopelessness, all these other things. Worry, all those things are addictions too. Live in the resurrection, church. Live in the resurrection. You know where you stand today. What are you representing out there? Are you representing the stone that the devil's put in front of your life? Or are you representing a living Savior, a resurrected Jesus Christ? Only you know. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we humble our hearts before you again today and we thank you, Lord, for loving us. God, we thank you for this service that you've allowed us to have today. Father, as I said last week and the weeks prior, I'll say again today, God, so much out of my comfort zone, scared to death. But Father, you're not scared of these cameras and what's going on out there in the world and what's being broadcasted in this world. Father, I broadcast today that you have risen you come out of that tomb. Father, help us today to examine our own lives today, God, and ask ourselves, are we representing the resurrection today? Is Jesus Christ alive and well in our lives? Or has the old devil put an old stone back in front of our joy, 
our happiness, our contentment, our faith, and our hope. Thank you, Lord. God, and I pray today, Lord, if there's one out there, Father, that has not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, Father, this will be a day that they realize what an opportunity. The plan of salvation is there for them. I pray, Lord, your will be done in everybody's life today. In Jesus' holy name, amen.